Battle of Agincourt has iconic status among the English and the Welsh, and quite rightly so. It was here that Henry V, with a small army ravaged by disease, beat a much larger French army that was blocking their route back to Calais. Henry, like his father, was far from secure on his throne, and there was nothing like a God-given victory over the French to establish his legitimacy in the eyes of his medieval subjects. In 1415, Henry gathered his army, dealt with plots, and set sail for France, landing near Harfleur. So, Mike, on the 13th of August, after a two-day crossing, Henry V arrives off this beach here. Andrew, he certainly does, but he doesn't land straight away. He keeps his force on board ship, and the reason he does that is to keep control. He doesn't want his, his men-at-arms and his archers wandering off into the hinterland behind the beach, carrying out pillaging activity, etc. He wants to keep a tight control on his force. Henry's first objective was the port of Harfleur, which had been a base for French raids against the English coast. With cannon to batter down the walls, the king began the siege. But the town was stoutly held by an inspirational French knight, Raoul de Gaucourt. So, Tim, this is one of the last remaining fragments mm. of the great strong walls of Harfleur. How are they going to stand up to this new weapon of war, the artillery gun that Henry had brought along? Well, considering that Henry brought the, the largest and the latest, they did remarkably well. But these guns fired stone cannonballs, essentially, called gunstones. And he brought 10,000 of them with him, and at a much higher velocity than the traditional catapults that he also had in his arsenal, these gunstones would smash against the wall and bring it tumbling down. Despite this latest military technology, Harfleur continued to hold out long enough for the bloody flux dysentery to ravage the English army. So John Holland's attack was both decisive and innovative. As his force came forward, pushing the French back, they threw firebrands and bags of gunpowder in and around the Barbican area. This created more confusion. Smoke, flashes, burns, and forced the French even further back. The English force poured into the Barbican, killing the French defenders and taking it into English possession. They raised an English banner over the Barbican. Both Henry and de Cocor knew this was a decisive moment. Riven by factionalism, the French had been very slow to mobilize. And consequently, with a much reduced force, Henry was able to head east to Calais, just eight days' march away. However, a powerful French force anticipated his moves and blocked the crossings of the River Somme. Henry and his army were in an increasingly dire situation. Further inland, the Somme Valley, though narrower, is still a significant obstacle. Such causeways across the valley as there were were all heavily defended by the French. Heading upriver, Abbeville was heavily defended, so was the Pont Remy crossing and all the others. And what is more, the French were shadowing Henry's every move, moves that were taking him further and further away from Calais and safety. After eight days, food was running low and the prospect of disaster was facing the king. On the evening of 18th of October, approximately 10 days since they left Harfleur, Henry's army reached the village of Nessel. He sent his now customary demand for wine and bread, but the villagers refused. In response, Henry ordered that the countryside would be devastated the following morning. However, most probably via a Frenchman who hoped to save his life and property, the English discovered a pair of forts that were unguarded and just about viable for a crossing by the army. Henry had his miracle and he was across the Somme but he was still a hundred miles south of Calais. I would imagine at this stage morale is really high. The whole army can see an easy run to Calais and home. Yeah, they're over, they're over the, the hurdle of the Somme and everything seems to be going well until uh, Henry's scouts move forward and start to detect obvious signs on the ground of a massive movement of troops and it can only be the French. Blocking the road to Calais was the French army. Henry and his diminutive force would now face trial by battle. 
Battlefield History TV tell the full story of this epic campaign and the English underdog's unlikely victory against all odds in Agincourt 1415.